I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about vitamin B9, or folate, as a nootropic. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Vitamin B9, also known as folate or folic acid, is a water-soluble and one of the eight B vitamins. Folate is a critical component of DNA and RNA synthesis, gene expression, amino acid synthesis, and myelin synthesis and repair. Folate is required as part of the cycle that produces most of your major neurotransmitters, including dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Folate is used in red blood cell production, helps break down and use proteins, and just about every other process in your body. Folate deficiency is found in at least a third of those suffering from depression. Folate touches nearly everything happening in your brain, and the reason why we're investigating it here. Folate should be part of your nootropic stack. Green leafy vegetables or foliage are rich sources of folate, and how folate got its name. You can also get folate from citrus fruit juice, legumes, fortified foods, and liver. When you eat vegetables containing folate, or eat flour enriched with folic acid, an enzyme called MTHFR converts folic acid and food folate into 5-MTHF. Folate is a general form for a group of various tetrahydrofolate derivatives naturally found in food, or THF. Folic acid refers to an oxidized synthetic compound used in dietary supplements and food fortification. THF can enter the main and natural folate metabolic cycle which starts out in the mucosa of your small intestine. Synthetic folic acid on the other hand undergoes initial reduction and methylation in your liver where conversion to the THF form requires the enzyme dehydrofolate reductase. One of the problems with choosing the unnatural folic acid version is if there's low activity of the dehydrofolate reductase enzyme combined with high intake of folic acid. You end up with unnatural levels of unmetabolized folic acid entering your circulation. Several studies have reported the presence of this unmetabolized folic acid in blood following consumption of folic acid supplements and um, folic acid fortified food. Now we have growing evidence in Western society that we generally test for excess levels of nat unnatural folic acid, due mainly to eating processed foods and folic acid enriched flour, and still suffer from folate deficiency. Now high doses of synthetic folic acid may increase your risk of cancer, immune system damage, and other health problems. Another major problem affecting folate deficiency is problems with the MTHFR gene. Remember that this enzyme called MTHFR is needed to convert folic acid and food folate into 5-MTHF. There are two common variants in this gene that affects the functioning of MTHFR. They are called C. 677T and A1298C. Now both variants are genetically inherited and depending on their presence in your system can reduce the effectiveness of MTHFR from 30 to 70 percent, which is another cause for folate deficiency. Estimates of the prevalence of these mutations in our general population are up to 60 percent. Now, some doctors report that nearly every patient in their practice have one or more of these MTHFR mutations, and we have clinical evidence of the associations between both MTHFR mutations in depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Now, folate is one busy molecule, molecule in your body. It donates a methyl group to the homocysteine to make SAMe. The methyl donor SAMe is involved in the formation of phospholipids, glutathione, myelin, uh, coenzyme Q10, carnitine, and creatine in your brain. It synthesizes the enzyme cofactor BH4, which is critical for the synthesis of the major neurotransmitters, including dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. It synthesizes DNA and tRNA. It recycles and re reduces 
the inflammatory amino acid homocysteine, and it builds red and white blood cells and platelets. Well, first, folate influences neuroplasticity in neurotransmitters. Folate is required for the synthesis of the neurotransmitters dopamine, epinephrine, and serotonin. The active metabolic folate, 5-MTHF, or L-methylfolate, participates in the remethylation of the amino acid homocysteine, creating methionine. SAMe, the downstream metabolite of methionine, is involved in numerous biochemical methyl methyldonation reactions, including reactions forming the above-mentioned neurotransmitters. Now, without the participation of 5-MTHF in this process, SAMe and neurotransmitter levels decrease in the cerebrospinal fluid, contributing to the disease process of depression. Now, studies have shown that those being treated for depression with SSRI antidepressants and are not responding to these drugs can get much better response by taking folate with their antidepressants. And second, folate helps reduce depression. Folate is involved in one carbon metabolism in the brain. This folate cycle is responsible for the synthesis of methyl groups which are utilized by SAMe in several methylation reactions in involving nucleoproteins, proteins, phospholipids, neurotransmitters, and monoamines. Deficiency of both folate and vitamin B12 will impair the methylation process, causing the accumulation of homocysteine. Low concentrations of folate in your blood, red blood cells, and spinal fluid are associated with depression and dementia. Research shows that cognitive function is related to methylation processes in your brain. The depression hypothesis supported by the similar effect of SAMe on monoamine neurotransmitter metabolism, which is all also in, implicated in depression. The lowest concentrations of folate and SAMe in spinal fluid are found in dementia, including Alzheimer's disease. Depression affects about a quarter of the U.S. population who have at least one depressive episode in their lifetime. But worldwide, folate deficiency is found in at least a third of those suffering from depression. And research shows that folate levels, even in the normal range, might be inadequate for metal, methyl donation and neurotransmitter synthesis. By adding folate or methylfolate to your nootropic stack, you're adding a necessary ingredient for the synthesis of the neurotransmitters dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. The active metabolite of 5-MTHF, or L-methylfolate, participates in the remethylation of the amino acid homocysteine, creating methionine. SAMe, the, downs, the downstream metabolite of methionine, is involved in several methyl donor reactions, including forming most of your major neurotransmitters. Methylfolate also seems to save the day by stepping in and substituting for BH4, an essential cofactor in neurotransmitter synthesis, when BH4 is low. The bottom line Folate helps boost alertness, attention, cognition, memory, and mood, and help, uh, helps alleviate brain fog, anxiety, and depression. Up to 60% of us do not produce enough of the enzyme needed to break down the synthetic folate acid found in supplements and fortified foods like breakfast cereal and bread. And the simple presence of this imposter in our diet is likely contributing to many of our modern diseases. Neurohackers report that dosing with methylfolate boosts alertness and energy levels, relief from chronic pain, tolerance for heat increases, sociability increases, relief from depression, fatigue, and paranoia, fewer headaches, mental clarity increases, you're much ha happier, calmer, and more energetic, and gingivitis and gum inflammation decreases. We've got a ton of research when it comes to folate and folic acid. I've got clinical studies in the original transcript of this video over on Nootropics Expert for folate as an antidepressant. I've got another clinical study for folate reduces the risk of dementia. 
and I've got another study on how vitamin B9 or folate improves memory. So to see details of these studies, see the original transcript on Nootropics Expert. The recommended dosage for vitamin B9 or folate is 500 micrograms. If you decide to add folate to your nootropic stack, start with B12 in the form of methylcobalamin and then introduce your dose of methylfolate and cofactors such as vitamin B2, B, vitamin B3, B6, trimethylglycine, and vitamin C. If you have an adverse reaction to methylfolate, like agitation, increased anxiety, or a headache, you, you can take vitamin B3 or niacin in 50 milligram doses every 30 minutes until you experience relief. Now note that vitamin B3 or niacin requires SAMe for metabolism and can contribute to a drop in methylation if you're low in SAMe. It is also a cofactor for the coenzyme COMT that breaks down norepinephrine, epinephrine, and estrogen, which are all potentially elevated if you're experiencing anxiety. Vitamin B9 or folate is considered non-toxic, so it's considered well-tolerated and safe. But note that high doses of vitamin B9, like those used in clinical trials, almost always use synthetic folic acid. Now, if you are deficient in vitamin B12, and many people are, it can manifest as anemia and is undistinguishable from folate deficiency. Now, large doses of folate could correct anemia without correcting the underlying vitamin B12 deficiency and leave you at risk for irreversible brain damage. This is why the U.S. Institute of Medicine advises that all adults limit their intake of folic acid supplements to one milligram daily. Now, note that this is unlikely that you'll encounter this problem by using folate or methylfolate instead of synthetic folate acid. But I don't have the science to back this claim up yet. Now, high concentrations of unmetabolized folic acid in your blood, especially if you're low in vitamin B12, could result in a compromised immune system and problems with cognition. Other side effects when using folic acid, particularly in high doses, include stomach problems, insomnia, skin reactions, uh, confusion, loss of appetite, nausea, and seizures. Now, many medications interfere with folic acid absorption, including antibiotics, some chemo meds, antacids, some anti-seizure medications, um, ibuprofen, and naproxen. So be careful about what you combine folic acid with if you're on any kind of medication. Folate is available in capsules, soft gels, and in powder form. Studies have shown that the active form of folate, methylfolate, which is more easily absorbed and easily crosses the blood-brain barrier, may be effective in the prevention and treatment of depression and dementia. Look for a folate supplement that says L-methylfolate or 5-MTHF on the label, or even better, with the word quadrifolic or metrifolin, which are branded forms of folate, ensuring their purity and effectiveness. Avoid any product, including multivitamins, which list folic acid on the label. Look for a supplement that's got folate in it or 5-MTHF, not folic acid. So my nootropics expert recommendation for uh, vitamin B9 or folate is up to 500 micrograms per day. And that's my report on folate. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropics expert and search for folate or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on nootropics expert. If you have any questions or if you want to share your experience using um, folate or vitamin B9, in, use the comment section at the bottom of the post on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.